Hello Twitter, I figured I'd tell you a story while I'm on my lunch break, broadcasting live from my inventory closet. That's where I eat my lunch. I social distance because I'm the best. I don't like being around people when I eat. Anyway, uh, I thought I would tell you a story because, you know, the internet's a place full of useless information and I thought, hell, I've got lots of that. So I wanted to tell you the story of how I knew that being with my wife or where my place was in the world was by my wife's side. So when I was a boy, right, which was seemingly, I, damn, that was a long time ago. God damn, I'm old. Anyway, when I was a boy, I used to be fascinated with limos, right? I thought limos were incredible. They fancy and they showed you was, you had style. You were somebody. And I remember as a kid, I used to watch TV and think, someday I'm going to ride a limo because I'm going to be somebody someday. You know, back when I was still young and had all kinds of hope and dumb shit like that. Anyway, <laughs> Fast forward to uh, 2014, yeah, 2014, I went to visit my wife for a week. I took a vacation off of the job I had at the time, and I went to visit her, and so we spent the week together. It was a wonderful time, best week of my life. Fast forward that Monday, which was the worst day of my life, and I had to fly back home. So I fly back, and I land in RDU back in Durham, and my ride wasn't there, right? I had actually forgotten my phone and left that some bitch in Minnesota and had to have it mailed back to me. So there's a guy at the airport and he sees me. He's like, "Hey, buddy, you need a ride?" And I'm like, "Shit, I'm ready to go home because I'm tired and I'm angry and shit because I had to go to work the very next day." And so I'm like, "Yeah, man, I need a ride." He's like, "Man, how much money you got?" I pretty much have blown all my goddamn bread during my vacation. I think I had like thirty some dollars to my name. He's like, "All right, let's let's go, let's roll." So we hop in and sure enough. This motherfucker's driving a limo. Like a stretch limo. And I'm sitting in the back and it's got the little, you know, the little window with the, you know, the whole thing. And I remember sitting there and I'm in the limo and I'm like, this is one of my dreams. I've inadvertently achieved and accomplished one of my motherfucking dreams. I'm here. And I was fucking miserable. Not because of the limo. The limo ride was cool. The driver was cool. Really nice guy. Talkative. You know, not chatty like that, but friendly. It was the moment I had dreamt of as a boy, but that moment didn't matter anymore because now I had a new dream, getting back to my wife. And I, I remember sitting in the back of that limo and I couldn't feel like a somebody because without her, I was nobody. It was one of those light bulb moments. The light wasn't very bright, you understand, but the sun bitch went off nonetheless. And uh, I figured out that's where my salvation was. That's where I belonged. And here it is seven years later, and I have not left my wife's side. I know where my salvation is. I know where it lies. I know who it lies with. And as a result, I never go without it. So, uh, moral of the story is, man, you know, don't get wrapped up in one dream because there's always new dreams to have and to chase. It ain't over until it's over. So, um, now my story's over. I'm about to have me a crunch bar, and um, that is the end. Good day.